Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Kim. I'm glad you're here today because I have some really exciting news to share with you about some new treatments for Parkinson's disease. The past few videos I've done have been about new upcoming treatments and clinical trials. Well, this is even better. I'm going to tell you about three brand new FDA approved treatments that you may be able to take advantage of right now. You know, when my mom was going through her Parkinson's journey, we were always hoping for better options. New treatments that could help her have more good hours in her day, fewer side effects, and just a better quality of life overall. Well, I've got some fantastic news. The FDA has approved three brand new treatments in just the past year that are giving families like ours real hope. And I want to break them down for you in simple terms so you can talk to your doctor about whether they might be right for you or your loved one. These are not just minor tweaks to existing treatments. They represent real innovation in how we manage this challenging disease. Let's start with the most revolutionary one, in my opinion. Okay, so the first treatment is called Violev. It's an under the skin pump. FDA approved this in October of 2024, and it's actually pretty revolutionary. Violev is the first continuous 24-hour levodopa pump that goes under your skin. So instead of taking pills multiple times a day and dealing with those ups and downs, what doctors call motor fluctuations, um, off time, dyskinesias, etc., Violev gives you steady medication all day long. Most people with Parkinson's take levodopa pills multiple times a day. You know how it goes. You take a pill, you feel better for a few hours, then it wears off and you need another one. It's like riding a roller coaster all day long. The good news with Violev, it really helps with those unpredictable off times when your medication wears off and symptoms come back. Clinical trials showed people had more good time without those troublesome involuntary movements called dyskinesia. There are a little bit of a downside to this you're going to be wearing a pump device and about a quarter of the people get irritation at the infusion site. Things like redness, pain, or swelling. Some people also experience hallucinations or dyskinesias, which are those uncontrolled movements. Now, Violive is different though. It's a small pump that goes under your skin, kind of like what people with diabetes use for insulin. But instead of insulin, it delivers levodopa steadily all day long, 24 hours a day. Think of it like this. Instead of getting big gulps of water when you're thirsty, you're getting a steady stream of water all day. Your body gets a constant, smooth amount of medication instead of those ups and downs. This is really for people with advanced Parkinson's who are not getting good control with oral medications anymore. Now this brings us to our second option that tackles the same problem but with a different approach. But before we talk about that one, I want to ask you to please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and place a comment down below. That would be fantastic. And it helps me more than you know. Thanks a bunch. Okay, treatment number two, Onopgo. I don't really know how to pronounce this, but it's up there on the screen. You can read it. This is another pump option. Um, this one was just approved in February of 2025, so it's brand new. Let's talk about this drug. This is, an, this is also an under-the-skin infusion device, but it uses a different medication called apomorphine. Don't worry, it's not related to morphine, despite the name. It's actually a dopamine agonist, which means it mimics dopamine in your brain. Here's a weird little fact. When my mom was on hospice, they gave her morphine to keep her comfortable. And while she was on morphine, every single one of her Parkinson's symptoms went away. Maybe there's something to do that. Who knows? Okay. Anyway, like Violev, um, this drug, I'm going to try to say it again, Anopgo, is designed for continuous treatment throughout your waking hours to give more consistent control of, of the off episodes. Those off times when your regular medication isn't working well. The downsides are similar to what we saw with Violev. You'll get bumps and redness where the infusion goes in. Other common side effects include nausea, sleepiness, dizziness, headaches, anemia, and trouble sleeping. 
This treatment is specifically for people who are having a lot of off time. You know, those periods when your regular medication isn't working. What I love about having two pump options now is that people have choice. Your doctor can look at your specific situation and decide which pump might work better for you. But what if you're not quite ready for a continuous pump? What if you just need your regular levodopa to work a little better and last a little longer? That's where the third medication comes in. So the treatment number three is called Crexent. Now, not everyone wants a pump, and that's totally okay. The third new treatment, Crexent, is was FDA approved in August of 2024, so about a year ago. And this one's really clever. It's still the classic levodopa and carbidopa combination that's been the gold standard for Parkinson's since the 1970s, but with a smart twist. What makes this special? It combines immediate release granules with extended release pellets in one capsule. Plus it uses something called a mucoadhesive polymer. Think of it like a gentle glue that keeps the medication sticking to your intestinal wall longer so it gets absorbed better. This is known as an extended release medication. Think of it like a time release cold medicine. Instead of taking your levodopa several times a day, Crexent is designed to work longer in your body. In clinical trial, people got an extra half hour of good on time each day, even though they only had to take it three times daily instead of five times with regular levodopa. Each dose lasts about one and a half hours longer than the immediate release levodopa. The most common side effects are nausea and anxiety. You might also experience dyskinesias, which are those involuntary movement, involuntary movements, especially when you're first switching over from your regular levodopa. Dizziness was also reported. This is perfect for people who are doing okay on regular levodopa, but are having to take it too frequently or dealing with those wearing off periods between doses that are just really tough on them. So what does this all mean for you? Three new tools in the Parkinson's toolkit. Two continuous infusion options for advanced cases where oral medications aren't cutting it anymore. And one smarter version of the medication most people are already taking. Each one addresses a specific challenge that Parkinson's patients face giving doctors and patients more options to find what works best for their individual situation. The key takeaway, Parkinson's treatment is becoming more personalized and sophisticated. These aren't one size fits all solutions, but targeted approaches for different stages and needs in the Parkinson's journey. We now have more options than ever before. When my mom was diagnosed, the treatment choices were pretty limited. But in just the past year, we've gotten three new FDA-approved treatments. This tells me that researchers and drug companies are focused on making life better for people with Parkinson's disease. And that gives me hope that even more good treatments are coming. Now, I want to be clear about something. These are not cures. Parkinson's is a progressive disease. But these new treatments are about improving quality of life, reducing those difficult off times, and giving people more good hours in their day. Who might be a good candidate for these? You might be wondering if these treatments could help you or your loved one. Here's the thing. I can't tell you that. Only your doctor can make that decision. But generally speaking, these treatments are designed for people who are having trouble with their current medication. Maybe you're experiencing a lot of off time. Maybe you're having to take pills so often that it's hard to keep track. Or maybe symptoms aren't controlled as well as they used to be. If any of that sounds familiar, it's definitely worth having a conversation with your neurologist about these new options. Now, I suggest you talk to your doctor, like I said. And here's my advice for when you do talk to your doctor about these new treatments. Number one, write down your questions before your appointment. When you're sitting in that doctor's office, it's easy to forget what you wanted to ask. I also suggest bringing someone with you to the appointment because let's be honest, sometimes we as patients hear what we want to hear or sometimes we forget everything the doctor said. It's nice to have another set of ears listening and also for that person to be able to remind you about questions you may have forgotten to ask about. 
Second, be honest about how your current treatment is working. If you're having off times, say so. If you're struggling with the timing of your medications, mention that too. The doctor can't help you if he, she doesn't know what's really going on. I know that some people lie to the doctor because they don't want to look bad, but the doctor isn't judging you. They need to know the truth about what's going on so they can come up with a plan. My mom was notorious for lying to the doctor. She would say everything was fine when it definitely wasn't. Anyways, third, ask specifically about these new treatments by name. Violev, Onopgo, I wish I knew how to say that, and Crexon. Don't assume your doctor will bring them up. Sometimes doctors are so busy they don't mention every option unless you ask. And the doctor may not know about them or have had time to research them. But by bringing them up, it may perk their interest and just maybe they'll agree it might be good to look into them or try one of them. And finally, don't be afraid to ask questions. What are the side effects? How do they work? Am I a good candidate? Your doctor should be happy to explain these things to you. But like I said, your doctor may not have much knowledge of these new treatments. Doctors are very busy with patients all day, paperwork all night. It's always good to ask these questions of any treatment that they recommend, actually, not just these new ones. Looking forward, you know, when I think about my mom's journey with Parkinson's, I wish these treatments had been available for her. But I'm so grateful that they're here now for all of you. The fact that we got three new FDA-approved treatments in less than a year tells me that the future is bright. Researchers are working hard and more and more help is on the way. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I make videos like this to help families navigate Parkinson's together and your support helps me reach more people who need this information. When I lost my mom last year, I committed to continue making these videos in her honor in hopes of helping as many people and families as possible. Do you have any questions about these new treatments or comments? Are you taking any of them? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single one and your questions often inspire my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and each other.